off. <laughs> That's it. Come over here. Let's try and squeeze Dave in, shall we? We got the armchairs out today. <laughs> there we are. You're in. You're in. We're looking a lot smaller on screen today. We got that. Please do not disturb sign that is on there. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Let's just check if we're live on the old Facebook. Um, let's have a little look, mate. Let's have a little look. Let's just jump in on on here. Hey guys, hey Mark, how's it going? I uh, hope all is well. Had a nice bank holiday, Mark. Um, yeah, if you have joined us, as usual, a little bit of a different setup today. But yeah, do drop in the chat, just say hello. Uh, hey, Bry, hey, Jim, hey, Shona. Here we go, we got Laura. The whole crew. The usual crew. I think we got a few. Here we go, it's Gary as well. Great stuff, guys. Yeah, keep commenting just so we know who is who is joining us today. But yeah, how was, how was your weekend? There's was four days, wasn't it? And who was out trekking? Who was out? Well, I mean, we had lots of out trekking because we had a lot of people who were in Everest Base Camp. We had I like, wasn't. You weren't actually. You were recovering. Yeah, day. No, you yeah, were recovering def this definitely time. One reco uh, definitely one trekking. <laughs> That's all right. We were still recovering after the, after two cal. Um, but yeah, it's been a been a hell of a week. But um, yeah, great. It's also been amazing as well because you know we it's, it's so busy uh, at the moment. Like, yeah. What is it? We must have had over. 45 people at Everest Base Camp on the weekend. Yeah, it was a big one. It was a big one. Sure it's, re it's really exciting because we've got people over there who have yeah. done, um, we've had summits of Mera Peak, summits yeah. of Island Peak, loads of uh, base camp successes, loads yeah. of Gokyo successes. Um, so yeah, it's been a it's been a crazy season over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very happy. I mean, it's just so nice to be kind of talking about summits and base camps and, and things like that. I know. You know, rather than all the I other know. stuff we were used so, to. Um, I know. I know. Sometimes when we do the tune in, I almost immediately slip into, yeah. So the travel restrictions at the moment are, um, and uh, I haven't actually had to talk about them much in the last uh, few months. So we haven't, yeah. have we? I mean, you know, touch wood, touch wood. Um, it's it's all good. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. What's another day? Yeah. <laughs> That's all right, mate. Couldn't help it. Couldn't well, help there's it. no you, sense. You, there's no feeling. You, you you get me back. You get me back. Anyway, um, it brought us on to today's subject because we we were chatting actually quite early this morning. Um, on the way in and, and basically talking about, funny enough, altitude. Um, but we wanted to do a little that, bit different. That pesky menace. That thing that, oh, that, that she's happens. a cruel mistress, is that altitude? <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it did come to it that there were clearly some things that, you know, we obviously we, we probably talked about these over the last few years um, a lot. But actually some of them, although they seem obvious, uh, you know, sometimes they just don't happen. Um, you know, when we thought, you know, whilst people are going through these things and, you know, we say seven. There's a little sneaky eighth in there that we'll we'll come to at the well, end because altitude has eight words. Because it has eight words, eight, eight letters. letters, eight letters. Uh, so I was like, right, it has to have this word because yeah, it's, we've, we've it's got really to get important. it in. Um, but it was it was it was quite funny. We were just writing all down and coming up with things, and yeah, it's something a little bit different. And Dave, I, I heard you're doing the Carol Vorderman thing today. You yeah, I've, I've left that pen up there. <laughs> so um, clearly, I'm uh, I'm already really. I, I, wait, wait, wait. Okay, he's going right up there. They, look at that, they can see you. Wow. Yeah, that's like a... Mate, that's, that's good. I think Steve would be happy with our framing here. Yeah, I think um, he would be, yeah. Steve, the video guy, Steve. <laughs> who's that stick... Uh, Mona was asking, who's that stick figure scaling Everest on the whiteboard? Who is that? Um, is, that is that you? Yeah, no, that's Tukal, Tukal and that's me. Um, it made it like I'm going up, but I'm actually coming down. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, oh, we've got Heather from Cusco. Oh, my God, I can't stop. I have to go fall off a bike. Heather, oh, have the awesome bike day. Time. I am so, so jealous of I know. the bike day. But, I know. It's, um, it's a bit nuts out there at the moment, Heather, isn't it? I heard there was a, some some strikes in, in, in Peru. So, yeah, I hope you're having an awesome time, mate. And, uh, yeah, take some pictures. It'd be great to, to see how you're getting on. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, but who's on comments? I think we've got Fee on comments today. Is Fee on comments today? Yeah, she is. Sorry, I was looking for the that, window. That, that didn't sound like Fee. <laughs> That person didn't. was like, yo, dude, I'm like, like bees on the comments. Oh, we got Sarah from, from the pool as well. Sarah, congrats on making Mera Peak. Oh, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely smashed it. Amazing summit. I know you're off to Chitwan, aren't you? Um, tomorrow, I believe. But yeah, enjoy uh, being to Chitwan. It's absolutely amazing, amazing place. Um, completely different. The, the, the Terai region is like very flat. Mm. But yeah, Mera Peak all the way down to Chitwan, mate. You can't go uh, too, you know. Yeah, far. I, can't, I can't wait to catch up with Sarah and the guys on that Mera Peak trip because uh, yeah. I was following it quite closely just because it's exciting when we have something we don't do that regularly. Yeah, exactly. It's quite weird, um, it? and yeah, it was yeah, it was great to see yeah. him on the, on the summit. 100%. Fee on the comments, there she is. She's in. She's in. Now, honestly, Sarah is great. Um, you know, 
it's great to see some pictures as well. Um, you know us, we, we do love pictures and content and, and videos and everything. So yeah, um, oh, nice Sarah's to share. Been, Sarah's been smashing it. I, oh, I actually think Mera might have been a bit too easy for her. I think um, <laughs> I think Akin Kagwa next for you, Sarah. What do you reckon? <laughs> she, she probably would know, Sarah. Um, but right, yeah, today though, right, let's crack on. Let's let's get started. Yeah, let's do we, it. We got we got we've got eight layers to get through, although seven and one sneaky little extra we yeah, can, can leave we never let professionalism get in the way of a good show <laughs> <laughs> exactly but where should we start with dave so a what's yeah. i wonder what what a is though. um if you see me looking down <laughs> so, <laughs> so a the obvious one was actually going to be altitude but we've actually yeah, decided yeah. to change it because of that age old adage it's yeah. not the altitude it's the attitude exactly. so we've gone for a which is Attitude. Do I have yeah. to get up and write it on the board then? You do. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think right. we should write right. it on the you, board you, as we you, go. Yeah, you fill you fill the gaps. Then, okay. Yeah. Now attitude is is important. I mean, you know, it's 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 a two two way thing here. Like when you're when you're on a, a trek. Um, yeah. Nice, Dave. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have loads of people saying things like, "Can I have a P, please, Dave? <laughs> uh, yeah, have a consonant, please, Dave." Brilliant. Um, but no, attitude is is key because when you're on a trip, it's it's hard to get sucked in by the altitude, the, the hardness, the difficulty, you know, and and sometimes it's how you approach that that can make the difference. Um, you know, we we talk about mindset a lot, don't we? And we talk yeah. about positivity. It's not kind of as easy as that, but sometimes it is how you how your attitude is to the challenge. Um, and I think you know when you look at it. And you think, okay, get into get into Everest Base Camp, for instance. I use um, Everest Base Camp as, as an example. Um, you know, it can it can appear like this big sort of ugly beast that you kind of put on a pedestal, and it's you can you can start worrying about it a lot. And I think with with if you, if you faced it a slightly different way and break it into chunks or see it as as actually a, a good thing, a beautiful thing. Um, although it's hard, it's challenging. Your body is 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 working hard each day. Yeah. By having that kind of almost approach to or attitude. You will, you know, you'll have a far more enjoyable experience. So I think, you know, lots of these things that we, we talk about here in the um, in the seven or eight uh, that we're talking about, a lot of them are things that you you, you you probably do on a daily basis anyway. But when you're trekking a high altitude, it can be difficult. It can be challenging. It can yeah. get you down. Um, and I think attitude is massively important. Yeah, I think so. And just over all the years that we've sort of spent on these trips, I've yeah. kind of noticed a few they're not like no, nothing is like a golden rule really mm. but there are a few trends that i've spotted and one of them yeah. is you know depending on the attitude now it's very easy to well it's easy to fall into a situation of almost like overwhelm you yeah. know when you're dealing yeah, yeah. perhaps you're not 100 percent feeling great you know it's been a hot day it's been a hard yeah. day and it's actually it's it, it you it's not something that you know a lot of people can do naturally which is like keep their spirits up and always be happy some people naturally and i might be one of these people go the other way yeah. and get a bit fed up and a bit annoyed because it was a bit of a tough day mm. um but where attitude comes in for me is about bouncing back from that about focusing on why i went there focusing on the amazing things that i yeah. saw that day um and keeping that positive attitude into the next day all right everyone's allowed to have a little moment of misery where they might shed a tear let out a few f-bombs but ultimately wake up the next day with the same positivity that you started the trip with and i think that's really important yeah um because i've noticed those people that can't bounce back wake up the next day dreading the day because the day yeah. was really hard yeah it's almost a fast track to back to you know sea level really because everything's much much harder for you to sort of battle against and i think you know even on my recent experience on tupacal yeah um although i didn't make the summit i still i still look back and enjoyed it and i still yeah. started the next day with a positive attitude and tried to think of the learns from it and things like that and yeah attitude big one it can make it, it can make it make it make a big difference make a heck of a difference um it really can um but it's a big one yeah so that's 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 that attitude got in there um i see you wrote down altitude on there i got corrected it <laughs> brilliant now the, the second one we're going to come back to because that's our surprise one so yeah. i'm sorry to tease you there so early on but we'll come back to that but right t dave yeah. give us a t what's what's t mate? i thought i was the exhausted one <laughs> so t is yeah. for time okay but really what we're going to talk a little bit about more yeah. is the time you spend in the mountains but also the time it takes for you to get yeah to where you're going so really it's about pace yeah um it is it's so key your altitude yeah so key and it is a really important i've got to get up eight times i know mate i know <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. but um yeah pace is I, I think absolutely critical 
um, even when you're at the lower altitudes. So yeah. when you start on Tupcal, um, uh, Imlil, you know, what's that, just shy of 2,000? Uh, yeah, about 1,900 meters. About 1,900 meters, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, you're not going to feel the altitude. You're not really going to be, you know, out of breath and you're not going to suffer any altitude sickness. However, you are still about to go to altitude quite quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's the same with base camp. You know, you start at 1300 meters in Kathmandu. A lot of people think the journey starts when they arrive to Lukla. It doesn't. It starts from sea level and you'll go into altitude. And one of the keys, and you'll see this a lot on the base camp trip, there's signs on the base camp trail. Yeah. Walk slow gain altitude gradually yeah. i've seen them um and that's really what we're talking about with pace it's about slowing time, everything time. down as, as mark said shame there's no p in altitude <laughs> that was our problem when we came to this but we thought there's always a way around it right yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, I see what i see what he's getting out there but um mark we, it's time we, we listen if i could have come up with a different word for altitude, for altitude i would have but we have to shoehorn these things I know, in. I know, I know, yeah. But no, it's, it's me and Andy yeah. were just chatting this morning and quite often we, we sit there and we play around with these things yeah. and we'll get there. But yeah, <laughs> it is about time and it's about yeah. taking your time and it's about not rushing exactly. and it's not about who can get the fastest time. Yeah. A lot of these endurance and races and things, it's about PBs and things like that. Evertrek, uh, Ever is base camp, Kilimanjaro, all of the others, it's yeah. the opposite. The, the PB really is how slow you can get from A to B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it and it, ma it makes it a hell of a lot easier as well, much more enjoyable. Um, you know, we've we've had people. I know we talked about this lots, and I hate that we sound like a broken record, but pace is so key. You know, when you're altitude. Yeah. Um, you know, go in a, a decent pace. You know, and go in. Your, your guide usually sets the pace. Uh, you know, we've had a few mavericks in the past that'll kind of go on, but normally after a day or two, they they'll, they'll actually be struggling. Um, or certainly when they get above like four thousand, four and a half thousand meters. Uh, <laughs> So, sorry, I always get sidetracked by some of the comments. There's no M or B for Mainal Bhutan. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised Mainal how we can squeeze that in, wouldn't Shona. Ca wouldn't catch me wearing those <laughs> rubbish. Really? La Sportiva's no. Ah, La Sportiva. He's moved, moved over now, isn't no, he? No, no, I still love the Mainals. <laughs> the Mainals are still my uh, my go-to choice, but I really did have a good time with those La Sportivas. Yeah. I think Mark E. V. came to the office and saw me wearing them. He did. He did. And uh, I'm happy to report back, me. Mark, that um, they were magnificent boots. They were. Um, they really did hold up. If the Mandels are a 10 out of 10 in comfort, yeah. these are probably a 9.7. That's pretty good, isn't it? Can't argue with I was going to, yeah, I, I, I wore my Mandels. Absolutely brilliant. And yeah, the, the time, so I'm bringing it back to time. Time, yeah. You spend in them makes a difference. But going back to pace, you know, just, just to reiterate that, you know, when you when you are looking at, at the time, you know, the time you're doing it, don't worry about the time. Don't think about, I have to get there by a certain amount of time. I, I think, you know, when, when you are tackling, I go back to, to Sarah when she was on Mera Peak, um, probably Island Peak. Maybe that's a bit more relevant because of turnaround times, of weather, of things that are happening that actually determine that you have to pick up the pace. You know, there's um, there's things that determine that. But generally, when you're trekking at a high altitude, yeah, you know, time is 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 nice and slow, and enjoy it, and just yeah. drink it in and enjoy the views, and that's the best way to to kind of acclimatize. Yeah, um, yeah. So we thought that was relevant. I I know if they had a problem with T, they time might have a problem. Pace, with this one. They might have okay. a problem with this one. Go on then, Dave. Okay, so I, any guesses, everyone? No, nope, can't hear you. It's, uh, <laughs> I is for no I in team. But there is an I in altitude. But there is uh, an I in altitude. <laughs> yes, we know. There's going to be Dave. an I in almost all of these. I, um, on, what is it? What does that mean? Yeah, so no I in team. And generally speaking, what we wanted to talk a little bit yeah. here is about the teamwork and the group dynamic of these yeah. trips um, and how important that can be for individual success as well. Yeah. Um,
Okay, let's see if that it actually gets Hang on, us. we may be back. We may be back. Let's have a little look. Okay, just let us know if uh, we are back. Cool. Like, oh, we're back. Happy days. Sorry, guys. We um, Clearly, there was uh, an eye in internet, but clearly we were lacking the internet. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had some technical issues. Apologies for that. Yeah, so we were in Marrakesh last week. Um, <laughs> with the we didn't have any issues. With like one bar of Wi-Fi. I Everyone know. said it's the best it's been. <laughs> Well, I'm glad all of you are still here anyway, because we were contemplating turning it off, turning it back on again. But yeah, hey, great stuff, guys. Like, where were we? We were talking about there's no I in yeah, team. Yeah, so we were talking about there's no I in team. As you can tell, these links might be a little tenuous. But stay with us, because the <laughs> advice is good, I promise it's you. It's good, it's good. Yeah, and uh, what we wanted to talk yeah. about there was really the team, the group yeah. dynamic, and how important that can be for individual success. Yes. Um, it's a strange thing when you go on these group tracks, because... The vast majority of people go there. It's an individual pursuit. You decide to do it. You book on and you go. And you get thrust in with 10 or 11, 12 people that you've perhaps never met before. Yeah. And you've all got to kind of get along and do this really difficult thing at the same time. So it, it can be a little, you know, like oh, for some people. But actually <laughs> learning to be part of the team, rely on the help of your team and the advice yeah. of your teammates it's invaluable. It's one of the things that I abs absolutely love about trekking is being part of the team. Recently on Tupcar, I can speak from personal experience mm -hmm. that being part of a team made all the difference for me. And yeah, it yeah. was, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to be the only one that didn't make it. Yeah. And I was, but actually seeing you guys make it, a lot of people might call BS, but honest to God, it's the truth. Knowing that my team members were pushing on, yeah. get into the summit. And when I came back, it was all high fives and everyone was really kind and helpful. It was good energy. You know, it? Yeah, was a, know you it was a good energy. and Because half of us were like, it's always that, you know, is it right to celebrate? But actually as a team, it was a, it was a successful trip. You celebrated. <laughs> No, I just, I just, I, made, I just, I make the summit. No, no, no. Honestly, I, 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 it was yeah. really strange, and I honestly, hand on heart, um, as I was walking back down to the yeah. car, we watched the video earlier. There's actually video footage of me turning oh God, back. I know. I didn't realize, but Zach had his and uh, I, a GoPro. I made it further it. than we thought. It was quite high, but um, yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's tough but, watching actually, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. But well, I remember walking back down, and the main thing that I kept thinking was. I, I, I really hope my mates get there. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want to be the first one of many to come back down. I feel yeah. I'd have felt horrible. Um, you did. It, and, you but, know, it, it's so important, isn't it? Like, I think Shona put on before, I think it was quite early on, we were talking about, we were talking about attitude, but actually she mentioned team. And, you know, it's no I in team. But it is so key, like the pat on the back, you know, yeah. that, like you do have bad days. You know, as Shona mentions, that everyone will have at least one bad day. We all do. Yeah, you know, you have bad moments or bad times, and then your your mates do bring it back up, and and I think knowing the success, if we we talk about must dos, it's quite high up there because the, the the teams that actually work and and succeed and get to where they want to get to are the ones that work yeah. closely together and support each other, and uh, no more does that happen when you're in the trenches. Yeah, when you're actually 100%. struggling and you're all in the same boat. Maybe some of you are feeling better than others, and then you actually you're the one that takes them over a cup of tea. Or you're the one that takes over. Maybe there's some popcorn going around. Yeah. And, you know, you're the person that's picking that up. And, you know, and again, you don't want to think like, you know, I know a lot of you in this community and I have a Trek community. I like this anyway. You know, like, I feel like we've built a great community like that of like-minded people. But it's just a reminder that, yeah, on a trip, you know, it's all about that team, um, you know, and how we come together and how we succeed as a team. Yeah. And, you know, that way people, especially of altitude, because it is challenging. Honestly. You have better success. It makes a massive difference. Yeah, it, does. Yeah. it genuinely does make a big difference. Yeah. I think that those people that do trek solo mm. have always come back and said it's more of a challenge. But when you think about it, well, yeah. I'm going to the same place at the same time. I'm doing the same walk. Why is it more of a challenge? It's because of the energy that you can get from your teammates and the mm. rest of the group. You'll get on with more others more than other, you know, more than some. But having those people there so if you're struggling and i, and I can yeah. testify to this like when i'm really really struggling and someone walks up and they're like come on mate it is like a transfer of energy and yeah. it just gives you that little bit more determination to keep going it does doesn't it? um when the going gets tough and helps you bounce back as well yeah um this is so, so important. some of the my best memories on kilimanjaro funnily enough are yeah. playing uno in the tent yeah, yeah, crazy exactly. is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I think about it, and I think about reaching the top of Paranco, I think about reaching the summit, all of those amazing things. 
Yeah. But I never laughed more than when I was in the tent playing Uno. That speaks volumes. To yeah. Me. And it is different. It is different. It's hard when, you know, you are you are doing solo trip. I've, I've done uh, solo trips on, on my, you know, on my own. Uh, first time I went to base camp was on my own. Um, I know uh, just people on here, I think Kim, uh, he made, made two cannons on his own, you know. It, it is it's a bit more, obviously, a different challenge. Um, but, you know, even your team, though, is your guides and your porters, even even they kind of react to you, yeah. um, you know, when you're trekking on your own and that kind of thing. And it's, it does hard. It is a, I think it takes an inner, there's something different that has to happen there when you're on your own. Um, it's certainly not for everyone. But, but yeah, we, I thought it was good, that one. No INT. Well, funny, Kim actually told me an interesting story when he yeah. went up to Cal. Kim, I hope I'm getting this right and I'm attributing the story to you. I think <laughs> yeah. I'm right. And um, got to a certain point where just absolutely exhausted and was thinking, shall I just go back? Right. Then he saw the guide with the Evertrek banner. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Amazing, "I got to get, I got to get a picture for the boys." I think that was, and cute. and, yeah, 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 and yeah. honestly, that story made me chuckle, and also made me think, like, yeah, we've got good, we've got some good customers, yeah, but uh, but also, it is almost like that little team dynamic, you know. He yeah. wanted it it, it, it became about doing it for someone else, yeah, and yeah. doing it and helping someone achieve something, even if it is the guide getting the banner at the top, yeah. And um, yeah, I really appreciated it, and I really did think it was a cool story. Yeah, but, Mick um, as well. Yeah, Mick was, yeah, he, he especially did the eight day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on another trek, I was once told to F off and stop being so cheerful. Wow. Yeah, I, exactly. I mean, it's, you know, you, you've got to be respectful to everyone. And some people don't like that all of the time. Just find that balance. Um, I, I, Shona, yeah. I mean, when it comes to things like that, I think sometimes, you know, it doesn't hurt. Um, you know, it's not for everyone, but you'll, the, the 90% of people you do hit will have the positive impact on that. So keep doing that. Yeah. Uh, the odd person that tells you to F off. Oh, you can live with that, right? You know, um, but yeah, not everyone welcome support, but at, at altitude, sometimes you need it. Um, certainly, there's definitely times when, you know, yeah, so but just, just leave me alone. Just leave you me know, alone. some people, <laughs> some people though, they are stuck on that track. Remember yeah. when I said about bouncing back the next yeah. day? So if they can't, it is almost like a fast track to yeah. sea level. Um, yeah, awesome. Is right. Paul, Paul, welcome back from EBC. No worries, mate. I saw some pictures, it looks like you had a unbelievable time paul but yeah thanks very much mate yeah yeah i love it when people come back i know it's great it's great to hear i, mean, I like it when they stories. go but i like it when they come back and say <laughs> just like some of kim williams are so rude uh see it's shown not to us yeah yeah uh right so what's the next one then the tea. next one t i think i wanted to do there might be some surprises here i wanted to use t for t you did but you know this is this was a little bit boring but you'll get it Trekking. Hey, hey, had to get it in there. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> so I suppose with, with this then, Dave, we were thinking it's just about getting the basics. You're, you're on a trip. You know, we've talked about, okay, so you're in the right, you know, you've got good attitude on it. You know, going at a good pace. You know, you're working hard as a team. But the trekking basics is what we mean. You know, things like the basics of what you have, um, the equipment, obviously you're going to have, you know, you're on a trip, you've got what you've got. But it is about just doing the basics of altitude, isn't it? Yeah. Of walking, of trekking, of enjoying yourself. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we we, we chose trekking because it is a catch-all term. Yeah. And it's a way of us getting all of the important things in one without being too specific. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is about just, you know, getting the basics right of trekking, yeah. which is being fully prepared for the environment in which you're going in. You need poles, you need the correct boots, you need the correct socks, the correct underpants, all of those little nitty gritty things that yeah. we talk about that make a big difference. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? No, it's, it's a good one. I mean, yeah, we have to get we have to get this one in for tea, right? But yeah, trekking is enjoying the trekking as well. You know, sorry, we've got a screen going off there. Got Honestly, light now, got I, I actually light. had a little bit of a panic there when that one went off. Really? That's all right. I'll move it now just so it gets a little bit more light. But yeah, it, it is important because, you know, you, 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 you're thinking about why you're there. Um, what you're doing um don't forget the trekking part yeah um you know obviously you won't you're there you're walking <laughs> well or even if you even if you're climbing a, a six thousand meter peak you know just 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 get the basics right yeah um uh, you know and that will will make the difference because it's like anything you get the basics right in anything you do um you know you're, you're going to succeed remembering why you're there as well is a really good term yeah and remembering what you got out of trekking as well yeah. because it's yeah. amazing and i think karen Bade, um, and a few others. I'm deliberately getting it wrong, eh? So, um, yeah, the, so the, the, Sinead, the Sinead, Karen Bade. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's... And, and, also, and, also, yeah, and also another guy called Chris, who emailed in recently, yeah. who was... They say things like, you know, they didn't want to come back. They almost had, like, a, a 
spiritual sort of connection yeah, to yeah. the place. Yeah. And it's amazing that trekking does that, right? It like does. you go yeah, there yeah. to do a trek and you just want to go to Everest Base Camp, this place where these altitude junkies, you know, yeah, go yeah. there. And actually when you come back, you you come back from just walking with just this sense of connection to a yeah. place. I've never known any place do it quite like Nepal for some reason. The Himalayas, yeah, they're definitely it, it's sometimes it's, it, it could be it's something that's not really tangible you can't tell what it is but there's something you know and I, i'm not like super spiritual or religious or anything but there, there's something that happens whilst you're there it could be like we go back to the trekking part it could be that whilst you're trekking you have more time to think and and think about maybe the things you're going through in life yeah. you know and, and and the journey you're on and where you're at what stage you're at in life and and then that so I think it should be called altitude, H for hydration. Brilliant. We'll come um, on to that in a minute. strange there is he's talking about hydration, but he's put a little beer there. I know. Do you, well, think, do you think he meant water? I think he means fermented water. Hang on, sorry. It's Brian. Oh, it's Brian. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Brilliant. Remember but the it, picture he took in front of your car? I do, while well, in just his pants. Yeah. How, how could I forget that? Yeah. How could I forget one almost of, naked. One, one of the best pictures I've ever seen. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was but, a cold day though, so don't hold that against him. But it, it certainly, when it comes, to, you know, these kind of things, you remember why you're there um, and the trekking part. Right, Dave, you. What have we got for you then, mate? You. This is a big one. It is a big one, and it's it's this one has almost replaced my knee. You <laughs> is for UV. Hey, for we got you in there. Sun protection, definitely. It's it it is a big one. Um, altitude you know the sun uh, you know because the air is, is technically thinner more uv rays are actually getting in um and you know they do affect you in a different way i think like we've got a book behind us there into thin air just on the shelf yeah and i think like you said there's a bit that john krakauer talks about like mm -hmm. the sun literally destroyed him almost. yeah he talks there's it's quite a big um a big bit of the early chapters where john krakauer is talking yeah. about the trekking um and how he just got heat exhaustion you know from yeah, the yeah. high altitude yeah. and he talked about it so much that when i first went to altitude i went to great lengths to get like a buff that was a uv protection good uv protection sunglasses and stuff like that because of the, the what i read about john krakow telling me about the high altitude rays and how because yeah, yeah. the the uv at altitude is a lot stronger than it is at sea level it's a piece um so if you are susceptible to things like heat exhaustion yeah um sweating overheating like Crack i lips. am yeah it makes a big difference. Sunburn lips. It was strange. The terrain battered us on Tukal because it was yeah. 30 degrees, all uphill, zero shade, yeah. roasting after a really hot day in Marrakesh. And then you get to the top and it's like the snow line. And we thought that it was going to be cooler. And yeah. it was at yeah. 4 a.m. But then when the sun hit the glacier, <laughs> it reflects back at you. And you get this feeling of like the heat coming from below. Oh, and yeah. you're like walking on a frying pan and if you're not adequately protected for it it can can end your trip early yeah honestly it's it's so powerful um you know that it can it can dehydrate you it can you know your skin especially if you know you, you struggle with that i mean you know sometimes i mean historically thinking back to it you know i was in my early 20s i just had to look at the look at the sun i go red yeah. you know i think my, maybe my skin's are, maybe i've got a bit more um protection in it these days i don't know how it works exactly but tend to, i don't do that anymore but you know maybe i'm a bit more clued up now because i do wear you know i, I wear 50 all yeah. the time when it comes to sun cream um and it's a good point actually i think it was who was it shona mentioned about yeah sun cream on the back of your hands like literally there there's a little patch where i didn't actually yeah. put it on and you know you do you, you're sort of covering your arms and your head and your neck and clearly i forgot my lips and um you do forget about these little bits here and next thing you know that red raw um, but it's energy sapping, isn't it? Like for yeah. you, because the, the the day before, yeah, you had thirteen hundred meters ascent, and you, you put the sun cream on. But it was that your extra UV was was like yeah. dehydrating well, your body. Right? We got a picture of all the salt that I lost. Yeah, we should put it through, shouldn't we? How can I send it to you? Uh, um, slack it to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, um, and the difference it kind of made to my body was yeah. was tremendous. I think my electrolytes dropped to a point where it yeah. took it, it took it was going to take more than a night. To get me back on track and it was um yeah it was really it was really tricky the heat absolutely bad me yeah um did. yeah keep talking about heat for a second <laughs> i know he's, he's clearly trying to send me an image i'll see if i can bring it up on here yeah but 100 percent, it's you know when, when you're it's something that you although we talk about a lot you know we say are you sun cream and 
sound like Baz Luhrmann now, don't they? Um, or that's uh, sunscreen, as he calls it. Um, yeah. it's, it's one of those that, you know, you have to be, you have to keep doing each day because sometimes you can get a bit complacent. I've done it. You know, I've been on Everest Base Camp. I think it was my second or third time even. And, you know, I, I was kind of, oh, you know, I've been here before, I've done it. Um, you know, and I forget to put cream on my nose. And next thing you know, I turn up, I look like Rudolph, <laughs> a Gorek chef. And you're like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, there's clearly I am, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I kind of struggled and I should have put more in. Um, you know, looking, yeah, you got like, I think Cara mentioned pole burn. Yeah, because you're like this all day and you're, you're kind of wrist and facing, facing up. Your hands do get, do get sunburned. So don't, don't forget that when you're on, when you're on a trek. Uh, look after your skin, look after your body. When you are getting dehydrated, uh, Dave's trying to find this photo. We're nearly there, mate. It's not far. Keep going. Yeah. It is, um, you know, if you are dehydrated and you run hot like Dave, your body's going to need more water than normal. Um, so you've got to, you've got to, you know, you've got to keep that up. Um, otherwise, again, that UV is really going to, going to drain you. Yeah. Dave, have you, have you sent yeah, it over? Uh, that is through, Nate. Okay. So, yeah. I will literally. And it, is an, it is an interesting picture because you can see. I mean, it's not very flattering, so I don't know why I'm dead set on putting it through. Um, I think I think you I feel cool in this one. Uh, I will no, bring it in. Cool is definitely not uh, what I, I look like. Graphics, hot. right? Give me a sec, guys. I'm clearly organised here. We'll bring it in. And this is Andy taking a picture. Um, he likes to do these candid shots. Um, Let's have a little look. Can you see that? There's Dave in his. You can see on his arms there, like the the. You're sweating so much, that's actual salt. Yeah, right? that's all the salt. And it was not just there, was it? It was all down my chest, yeah, all down yeah, my back. And you yeah. can see all the salt that I sweat. But you can also see there that that's a broken man. The boys in the background chilling out. There we are. Like yeah, they're uh, the guides. Like Ibrahim, our guide. Like, like it's the easiest day in the world where, you know, by contrast. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, it's, it's it can happen. Like Dave, like talking about your experience, you're one of the most experienced people are trekking, you know, that we obviously yeah. between us and everything. And yet... You know, it still happened to you. Yeah, no, it, 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 anyone, it, it was know? one of those where I think it was a, a little bit of an accumulation where I started in Marrakesh and yeah. had a hot day, perhaps didn't drink enough. <laughs> then on the early half of the trek, you know, going quite well, didn't drink enough. And then but I got caught out in the midday sun and absolutely done for. Yeah, it's, it's quite, yeah, just look at some questions here. Any sun cream? We'll come back to the questions. There's a few good ones, actually. We've got more written down. Yeah, we need if to. If I walk past you, I We need to crack on. So the next one is. Yeah, yeah, what we got? D. D. Come on, what's the guesses then, guy? D. Um, I think if we, if anyone's been on a, a um, on a Tuesday tune in before, they know there's one thing that we talk about a lot. Yeah. And D is for drink. It's for drink. Uh, because, like, we go back to what we just talked about then about UV. So you've got to drink more if you're sweating it out. Um, no, but hydration and drinking and water is like, you know, I'd say 80%, maybe even 90% of the time. If you're suffering from altitude, you haven't drunk enough water. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, it comes down to it. So you want to make sure you're getting enough drink. You're, you're drinking enough. You're getting as much down you as, as you can. Um, obviously, there's a limit. But, you know, we do recommend that if you're altitude, you know, anything around three liters is a good target daily. You know, it can be. <laughs> you have Mark Skinner, Diamox. I know that's a good one, actually. But we don't want to. That's not a must do. That's a maybe uh, if, if yeah. you can. But no, it's a good one. Good one, Mark. Um, but yeah, we're, we're drinking. It's so important. Um, and again, we go back. You know, talk about going to talk about pace or time. Sound like a broken record. But those two are probably the most important. You know, your pace and your hydration. Yeah. Or your drink. Yeah, I mean, it's it's critical. It yeah. it, it it. I think it took me a few days to sort of regain the electrolyte balance that I lost on that. Yeah. On those hot days. Um, and I fell into a bit of a loop afterwards of just not drinking because I didn't feel that well. I didn't feel that well because I was yeah. heat exhausted and I felt a bit sick. Um, so, yeah, it's absolutely it's absolutely critical yep. to keep yourself hydrated. It helps. It not only helps you acclimatize. Yeah. The moment you stop drinking and you dehydrate, you will stop acclimatizing. And yep. that will have a you know a massive effect on your ability to keep going higher and higher. 100%. But secondly, you have to replace what you've lost. So when we say drinking and stuff, we also yep. mean about replacing those lost electrolytes and yep. looking after Stage yourself says. and yeah, glucose electrolytes. I had some. Um, the only thing that I could manage to get down really yep. was the um, Dextro Energy tablets. Oh yeah, like the glucose which, which yeah, is yeah. which is not an adequate oh, me. replacement for good hydration, but. Yep. You know, in an emergency, it gave me just a little bit that I need. 
Um, but I quite regularly will use hydration salts and things like that. Those effervescent hydration electrolyte tablets from SIS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're um, good, aren't they? yeah. yeah, and they're pretty good. Like one or two of them in a litre of water and it just makes a big difference. They're so much easier to drink than those sachets you can get. You know, They're a bit, yeah, they, they oh, taste a bit better. They, they taste a bit better. Honestly, every time I have one, it just, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> but Charlotte yeah. makes a good point. Only time Coke is allowed to rebalance your electrolytes. You know what? First time I dr drunk full fat Coke was on two cal. Um, it was actually quite nice. I, I, I gave yeah. up sugar years ago, but yeah, it's um, it was certainly replaced what I needed at the time. Anyway, uh, right. Well, we'll nail the, the next two. Well, th this one a biggie, but E. Dave, yeah. E. <clears throat> what we got? Nearly there. Any guesses for E, guys? Yeah. E Come on. Is... And it's not ever track. E is for environment. Hey, nice. Nice, Dave. Yeah, environment is, you know, there's two things you can think about this, but must do's. And, you know, this is more, you know, this is more around, you know, being uh, looking after the environment, being aware of your environment, you know, like, and a lot of you in the community, I know, I know you're great at this. You know, you've a lot of my ever trackers who participate in, you know, carrying their rubbish, not leaving their, um, you know, feces or anything, you know, they're bagging it up and, and tissues and stuff and taking it with them. And, you know, it is when we talk about environment, it is about caring for the environment. Um, you know, looking after your surroundings uh, when you're in these places, you know, it, we're, we're, we're just guests in these places and we want to make sure that we pass through as guests. Yeah. That we enjoy it, you know, and, and, and you also respect the cultures there. So you're aware of your environment. You know, we, I think years ago we were trekking, I think it's about three, four years ago. And there was, it was on the Everest Base Camp trip and, you know, we're, we're, we're quite chill people. And, you know, I'm not sure this was the moment, but I think, remember what we call him? Boombastic Tony or something? Hip Hop Tony? Uh, hip Hop Tony. And he had this kind of, Thing, like ghetto blast hip hop kind of... tony had been annoying and I was me like, from... on the track he had nuts. been annoying me from the flight into Kathmandu because he was on yeah. that flight to doha and um this is where we just turns it like there's obviously different in yeah. different places so yeah. on kilimanjaro for instance you can play music you know lots of people do the guides mm. do it's that type of culture where they love music singing dancing yeah in nepal it was a slightly i've never really felt that it's i'm different. not i'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's a it's a massive faux pas, but I'm saying it's not in keeping with the environment and the, and the overall atmos. Yeah. And um, yeah, when I was walking up to Dingboche and there's this guy blasting out like hip hop. It was, a, as, bit, it was and, a bit weird. And as I'm walking up a real steep hill, he's like pointing at me and making all these gesticulations as if he's some sort of gangster. And um, yeah, he became hip hop Tony then. But he wasn't aware of his, of his environment, right? Yeah, exactly. He wasn't really aware, he of, wasn't aware it. Yeah. of it. He didn't really have any appreciation for where he was going. I'm slagging him off quite hard. <laughs> but um, but then we Sorry. saw. But he, but the reason is because I spoke to his guide in Dingboche, and his guide said, "I'm having a nightmare. Like he can't." And then in the end, they went down. They didn't. They, make could, it, they didn't they? go past Dingboche. Yeah, they were um, drinking as well, mind. Yeah, they so, were drinking and basically please. treating the whole thing like it was some sort of you know Wu Tang Clan convention or something. Yeah. But uh, it was, yeah, it wasn't great. And I think, yeah, another thing about looking after the environment is, you know, I don't understand it, but I can almost understand it where if someone drops a crisp packet and doesn't pick it up, they think, what's the impact of that? You know, <laughs> it's just one crisp packet. It's just me. I want to do it the once. But if everybody did that, imagine the state of this place. Yeah. And all of those things that people use to criticize high mountains, like, oh, it's a rubbish dump and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's not true. But if it was. It would be devastating to us, to yeah. the trekkers, to the visitors. It's our responsibility, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, as much as we, you know, we talk about must do and not necessarily to succeed, but I think just to do it the right way, you know, and we want to do things the right way. Um, you know, doing the right thing is a big part of our yeah. culture um, or ever trek internally, like as in our team. And and also, you know, we, we like to think that you guys do the right thing as well. Yeah. And we know you do. Um, but it's good just to pass that on. Uh, that's why E is in there. Um, you know, it's a big E. And right, the last one then, L. Um, and this was a little because all the rest we, we kind of come up with, but this was something that we talk about must do. Yeah, this is why we ended up with eight. <laughs> yeah, it is, not yeah, seven. Yeah. yeah, go on, Dave. Okay, so the seventh one and is luck. Is luck? Yeah, um, it, it is, isn't it? It's, you can do all the other seven right, and you can still get unlucky. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that you know we've had people like you know over the last week we've had to evacuate, and you know they've probably done all the others. But sometimes it's just not meant to be. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's, you know, luck as two things. You know, you can you can get unlucky. You can have good luck. Mm. Um, you know, but sometimes it's just that's just the way it is. Um, it doesn't quite work. And yep. maybe your body's not meant to be a high altitude. You know, sometimes you don't know until you get there. 
sometimes you you know you struggle and you just don't acclimate and it's just yeah, yeah it could be it could frustrating be, it, it but could it's, be, it's a big one isn't it? you know uh, again and i'll try and make this the last time i reference my tube cal trip yeah but i do feel like i had a i had a bad i said bad luck yeah, yeah you know i got diagnosed with a sinus infection yeah. um two days before we were set to leave and so i knew it was going to be difficult mm -hmm. and then i pick up antibiotics on my way to gatwick yeah. I pick up the antibiotics that I've got to take two tablets four times a day whilst I'm trekking at altitude, whilst I'm doing all the other things. It's just bad luck. You know? It made you feel unwell as well. Made me feel unwell. Like, you know, counter it. Yeah. What was amazing was you took two antibiotics four times a day, and I felt sick for about two to three hours after I took the antibiotics. But I had to take them four times a day, which meant I was sick pretty much all day except when I was sleeping. Yeah, It's bad luck. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of lessons that I probably could have learned from that. In reality, um, I'd have probably made a different call about, yeah. you know, when would be the right time for me to reach the summit. You know, yeah. we do have a very good flexibility promise, you know, for yeah. those types of people. So if you are, you know, if the mountain gods are not uh, not being kind to you, then, yeah. you know, sometimes you've got to go with the flow. And luck does generally mean that a little bit. Sometimes yeah, you have yeah. to go with the flow. People you over a little in, bit of it sometimes, yeah. Yeah, people over in Peru at the minute. There's some um, there's some uh, worker strikes in Peru that have impacted things. Um, you know, I'm sure many of you have done the trip to Ramachap. Yeah. It is luck whether you're not you're selected by the mountain gods or not to go to Ramachap or by the uh, Nepal Aviation Authority. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes uh, known as the yeah. mountain gods, but yeah, yeah the whole civilization of civil aviation authority. Yeah, and um, it is one of those things. Yeah, and my biggest thing was to say that if Lady Luck doesn't shine on you that day, yeah. is to not beat yourself up about it. Exactly. You know, um, it's like anything in life as well. Just because you, you, you're unlucky, or you know, you may, you may not have done all of those things we talk about on the board, and you know, you still get there. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you don't, and don't think that that's it. That's it. That's your deal in life. You know, you can try again. Don't give up. Yeah. Um, you know, some things take time. Um, sometimes the great things take time. Yeah. And, you know, keep going. And like, like Dave, you're going to get back to Tupacan. You're going to summit it. No. You know? Yeah. I mean, no doubt. Will. Will no happen. doubt about it. Um, mm. You know, there's, there's so many lessons. I think I might write like my biggest lessons learned from my yeah, failed. That'd, that'd be great. That'd be great. Because I feel like. Hands honestly, up, we would like that. I would like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, 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 Andy's always trying to get me to write. These <laughs> but I honestly think that I learned more from that failed attempt of Tupacal than I did any of my successes. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that I would perhaps have done differently. There's yeah. a lot of things that I've learned sort of mindset wise. Okay. That, nice. that I'd feel different about. Have yeah. I, had I, you know, when I go back and when <clears throat> I do things. So, yeah. Right. That's it. Now you're committed now. People are going to be what? where's that? Where's that article, Dave? I know. <laughs> do I'll do. I'll just record it in my voice. Mate, that's what I saw you need and to do. It's great. There's so yeah. many uh, things out there, but look, right. I hope that's helpful a bit. I know that's, you know, uh, attitude, altitude took 45 minutes to explain there. <laughs> but no, we'll, um, we have got questions as well. And, and any other questions do drop in. Yeah. We've got about 15, 20 minutes. We'll try and uh, get through these because we've had some come through on email and everything as well. But yeah, I hope that helps a little bit in terms of, you know, if you are going to altitude, you are trekking at altitude, that you do you do all those things and then you have a little bit of luck. Yeah. Um, you'll be, be successful. Um, you know, it's, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. Sometimes we don't know why. But um, it's all part of the greater journey, right? Yeah. Uh, right, Dave. Right, first question. Then, what we what we got? Um, so the first question we've got um, yeah. came in on email from Emily Cathill that said, um, yeah. uh, "After the most embarrassing moment on the group, I shall rephrase my question carefully." I'm not sure what that is. I'll have to look that up. Oh, okay. There was a a question relating to the hire of sleeping bags, and I commented asking whether they were real down or synthetic, as I get typically oh, okay. cough from real down. What wow. sort of temp rating do we need for the EBC, and what sort of different rating yeah. is uh, Comfort Extreme? That's part one. So part one, um, generally speaking, they are down. Yeah. Um, so if it's something that you um feel strongly about i know there's a lot of people um that perhaps uh, vegans for instance that props wouldn't want to use yeah. um anything like that um then i would perhaps suggest investing in something um yourself and bringing it with you not to say that we couldn't support it yeah but you are going to end up with that situation in a lot of different treks and a lot of different environments so mm -hmm. having your own sleeping bag something you're comfortable with would probably be yeah. a big help if you want to use a fully synthetic bag um because yeah, ours are a bit of a mix aren't they and yeah, you know, there, there's loads of sleeping bags we can get because we essentially, we, you know, we we hire them um, locally in 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 Tamil in Kathmandu. Yeah. Um, you know, especially if you're going on any of the uh, the technical, I say technical peaks, the trekking peaks. Yeah. Um, you know, you can get one that's suitable for that because you know we we do 
um, you know, the hire is included, um, you know, with with our packages. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, if if you want one specific, I, I probably get your own. Yeah, just, I I think it just makes it. I I have yeah. my own, and that's because yeah. I use it a lot. If you're going to do use it a lot and do multiple treks, I know if yeah. you've mentioned Island or Mera Peak, we'll come on to that now. Yeah. Um, I would definitely perhaps suggest ultimately getting your own. Um, or giving us enough heads up that we can work something out for you. But, yeah, we can always yeah. we can always sort something out, especially like on on Island Peak, Mera Peak. You yeah. probably need something a bit that's you know because it is cold on there, a bit a bit, yeah. bit more down. Um, you know, like a base camp, we're looking at roughly anything down to like minus ten. Um, you talk about like comfort or extreme. I think comfort is is generally where you can sleep. You know, normally in what you wear to bed in the UK, and you know you think you're comfortable. Extreme is that. You know the extreme ratings can go down stupidly, yeah, and that just means that you could wear all of your clothes and your down jacket, sleep in your sleeping bag, and stay alive, and stay alive. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I wouldn't really go on the extreme level; I go on the comfort level generally. Yeah, um, you know it. Sometimes you can have loads of layers, and it'll help. Like in the tea houses, yeah. especially in um, uh, you know, in Tamil, uh, sorry, in Tamil, in Nepal, um, you know, you get duvets, you get blankets and stuff. The same, like um, you know, if you're at Tubkal, you're in the refuge, you get blankets and stuff there if you need it. Um, you know, similar to that in, in some of the accommodation in the other parts of the world. Yeah. But when you're camping, you know, and you're isolated, you want a decent, you want yeah. a decent bag. Next question is a bit of a beast one. So I'll try and I'll give a quick answer and then maybe yeah. we can follow this up with an email or something for you. Yeah. Um, you wanted to look forward to Island or Mera, what um, technical training where oh, you wow, can access okay. it. So uh, we work very closely with a guy called Steve, yeah. um, who is um, a really, really high level mountaineer um who is really efficient in use of crampons ice axes winter conditions yeah um you can hook up with him through us um and book on a winter skills training course with him um it's who i did my training with it's who andy did his training with mm -hmm. very good guy very knowledgeable doesn't just teach you you know about crampons ice axe and how to use them you'll learn so much about navigation um and lots of ways to keep yourself safe so get in touch with us with that yeah what are the different classifications of climbing mean essentially they're levels of difficulty they're not strictly relevant for us yeah island peak mera peak and the peaks that we tend to do are called trekking peaks yeah. which means that they're ungraded as far as the routes that we go yeah um like four five and then you'd have like five a or b there's like an american classification a french classification yeah, quite a lot, essentially right? they all mean what type of climbing and how difficult that climbing is. And the route. And yeah. the route, yeah. So you might have, say, for instance, uh, Amma de Blam. Let's just say you can do a normal route that would have a rating. Yeah. And then there might be a second route that requires far more rock climbing and things. Yeah, nice. Um, hopefully that helps. But yeah, that's a quite a big question. I can answer yeah, in more I, detail for you. Uh, it's an after. interesting one, actually. Maybe we'll do one specifically on that. I know we've done some before on, like, specifically the trekking yeah. peaks or island peak, uh, mm -hmm. historically. The difference between trekking, climbing, yeah, that's, that's a good oh, one. Yeah. I think well, it definitely gives us um, another reason to talk about it because yeah, I, I'd like to go into that a bit more depth. Yeah, um, you know, because there's there's a lot going on. It, mountaineering essentially is any any mountain that you want to get to the top of and just finding a way. Yeah, um, obviously, there's winter mountaineering. Um, you know, like you, two calendar winters classed as winter mountaineering. You yeah, know? Um, but then in summer it's more of a scramble. Um, not talking about eggs. Talking about the the, the actual climb. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yeah, no, uh, it's, it's Easter, fine. isn't it? So, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, that was excellent. Um, oh. Yeah, me, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm leaving it there. Now. No, I'm a shell of my mouth. Oh. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, I don't want to overyoke it. Um, right, got a good question from Kim. And that is a good one. If what is the one mustn't do? Wow, um, mustn't do. I'd say uh, just from learning, I wouldn't drink alcohol on your way up mm. at altitude. That's a good one. I think that was to be the one mustn't do. As much as I, I like, I enjoy a drink. I think you know a lot of us do. Um, but it's always better on the way down. Yeah. So I'd say if you if you just to, you know, I don't, don't want to sound like we're we're preaching here and you know, mustn't drink. It's obviously you're all adults. You can do what you want to do. But just from what we've learned, the people who uh, you know, and especially us, you know, like I've been hung over altitude the very first time before even ever trek was around. Um, you know, and I learned my lesson, uh, so I don't do it anymore. On the way down, different story. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially on Everest Base Camp, and you know, you're coming back, and even if you're or you're going over Chola Pass or Gokyo Valley, Three Peaks, Three Passes, Island Peak, you go to that Irish bar in Namche, and they run out of Guinness. You're like, ah, oh. mm. but there's plenty of other alcohol there. It's, yeah. it's always nice to have a bit of a celebration. But yeah, don't. Exactly. I, I say mustn't do. At altitude, if you want to succeed, really, don't drink too. Don't drink too much. Yeah, good one. Um, Ramona yeah. has hey. asked. Uh, so she's booked on to Tupacal. Awesome. 
I see um, that, yeah, awesome. And uh, there's a question about cultural norms with regards to modesty and dressing and things yeah. like that. And any uh, advice on how to dress so as not to cause any sort of cultural faux pas, to be honest. Um, it's not like it is in the Middle East. Uh, Morocco, although it is, um, you know, it's predominantly a Muslim country. Yeah. They were in Ramadan when we were there. It was quite fascinating, actually. The prayers, yeah. the mosque was all in full force. Beautiful, wasn't it? It's really nice. But actually, um, I spoke to our guide, the city guide, and he was telling me that, you know, there's no real expectations in in terms of covering up and things like that certainly when i was in marrakesh almost everyone i saw was in shorts and t-shirt and just yeah. dressing normally as you would normally expect um so yeah it's not sort of um like a lot of the countries in the middle east where you you do have to culturally you know yeah. dress up and think well and cover up um yeah so i would say that's fine is there a fixed riyadh ever trek use uh does it have a yeah. pool it has a small pool it's really quite nice, nice a cold one and a hot one i jumped in the uh the slightly hot one it's quite nice actually the, yeah you know, riyadh africa is the one we use yep um it's part of our part of our package and yeah it's um it's a beautiful little place it's you kind of feel like a bit like indiana jones going down sort of the um what do we call it the, the sort of hidden back alleys yeah uh and next thing you know and it's in marrakesh is like that it's mad on the outside it can look like yeah. there's nothing and you go through and it's like, wow, look at this. This is amazing. That's why I, Marrakesh is a fascinating city. And I've only touched you know, a small percentage of it. Yeah. But yeah, certainly, um, Mona, I'll make to, to, to yeah. uh, welcome you in Marrakesh. The other half of it was about you want to do kind of solo exploration of Marrakesh. Yeah, go for it. Certainly plenty of time for that. Mm. Um, what's it like in the souks? It can be a little bit intense. I mean, not, I mean, to be, it's all part of the fun. I never really found that it was... Yeah. You know scary intense um you know i wouldn't pick up a guide off the street or anything like that because you know you don't know where they're going you don't know their credentials if you wanted a guided tour we'd sort it out for you if you want to go on your own that's fine there's loads of taxis and tuk-tuks you can jump yeah. into and just say we had africa and i'll take you back so there's no way really of getting lost i found actually the most intense bit was probably the central square areas oh, Medina, yeah. um where you have yeah, um, yeah so you you know the outside eating places and stuff yeah. like that which is probably a little bit intense. So if you want to walk through the middle and, and go through that, you can, but you can also go any outside. It's fun, isn't it? You get, you get yeah. challenged. No, thank you. <laughs> it's, honestly, yeah, you do get asked yeah. and you do get, you know, encouraged to come in places, but you just got to keep walking. Yeah. A little tip for mine is sunglasses as well. Don't don't wear, um, <laughs> don't make eye contact <laughs> and you're fine. Unless you want to buy something, in which case they'll be very helpful. Uh, Simon has asked, 65, can I tackle the Annapurna circuit track? What 65, recommend? he's a young man. Yeah. What recommend, uh, recommendations would you give me? It's a big one. Um, hundred percent. You know, we're, we're definitely uh, yes people rather than no people, and you know, it just depends on you in terms of how you feel about it. And you know, we've had people of of, of that of, of similar sort of age do it. Um, Seventy two. Well, yeah, well, you sure. know, Annapurna Circuit is a toughie. Uh, you know, you got to be prepared for that. Um, you know, you do all these on the back there, the the eight bits on the back. Um, you'll you'll go well. But yeah, it just depends, and it might be worth sort of dropping us a message, Simon. Maybe we can talk about. You know what you've what you've experienced so far uh when you're looking at doing it so you know if you need to do any more training to get get kind of in the mode for it you might be ready now but you know you do have to have i'd say you know you don't need any technical skills uh it's just trekking it's just walking it's just the physicality of it especially because it's you know it's round about a three-week trip the circuit you know you're going all the way around the annapurna massive and it's you know it is a beast you go up foreign la which is uh, i think just under five thousand four hundred meters so it's a high pass yeah um that's probably the that's the highest you'll be on that trip but it's a it's a bit of a beast um you know we had a couple of guys on there um i think it was robin um i forgot jamma's name now but they were on it they uh, about two weeks ago and yeah look fantastic parts of it a lot very remote compared to some of the trips that we do yeah you know you're talking about everest base camp in that region it is remote but this is probably on another level um in terms of the villages and and, and getting westerners and tourists it's very rare so it is good on that time. So yeah, mate, if you want to do it, we'd love to help you on that journey. Hundred percent. Awesome. Um, just drop us a drop us a little message. Yeah. Um, to help you. Ramona's uh, sorry, uh, not Ramona. Karen um, has said about uh, tea for tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, people have been asking about tats yeah. that they want to get when they're out there um and potentially putting a bit on the site i to be honest I, I got nothing against people doing it my only concern with actually having a recommended one is that if someone goes there and they get a misspelt word <laughs> or something weird that it might come back because i've seen this happen enough in the uk oh really uh, but i think it's a very cool way i mean um, yeah yeah why not if, you, if you're there yeah the only thing i wish i knew that they don't rub off 
before yeah. I got them all, you know. But um, is that it? Yeah, that's, that's the only thing. Right? But no, I actually saw um, I saw Cowens is very very well done. So yeah. whoever did it is a good is a good tattooer. Yeah, there's probably heaps there. I mean, like like Dave said, you know. Um, we can have a little subsection on the site. It's a different niche, Karen, to what we're what we're used to. But um, you know, we could maybe have a, a content around it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look. It's certainly, you know, definitely post in the group as well because there's there's other people who, who are interested in that. Um, like I'm not a tattoo guy, but Dave makes makes up for the whole team. Mm. So um, you know, he's he's certainly got enough. Any more, Dave? Any more for you? Any more tattoos? Mm. Uh, well, I got to finish my back. Ah, uh, you got to get his back sorted. Got to get the back finished with Everest once you climb there, right? No, there's no space on there anymore. For Everest. <laughs> Everest, I don't know. We're going to put Everest. Um, I'll put it on my. There. Yeah, I'll put it here somewhere <laughs> on the inside of the arm. But um, yeah. actually, I might put it on the neck. What do you reckon? But um, to you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right, by there. Um, right. We still got. Well, we got about. Let's, it's going to be a little yeah, bit longer should, than should, normal. But let's crack on. Should with we these try and ones. fire them through? Um, Haley. Haley Lou. Any sunscreen? Anyone to recommend that don't run in your eyes? I think a lot of the ones that, um, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? When you sweat and you put sun cream on, it drips down. We, we had it on, on in Morocco. Some of the ones that are cream based tend to be better. So sometimes because my, my skin's quite sensitive, I always look for actually um, kids sun cream. Uh, so it's, they haven't got as many chemicals in it. And, you know, I put that on my face there. It, 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 it's a bit more because it got sensitive skin. So it kind of helps something to look out for. Um, you know, all the usual makes um, have them. But I get the ones that are a bit more cream instead of the spray water clear ones. Yeah, I you know I may look a bit pale, but at least the sun cream is doing. Do you its know job. what I want to ask um, Sinead a question? Okay, I got it wrong again deliberately. Wow. Uh, yeah, about she she mentioned that she used this really good one beginning with A. Find out what it is, Shona, because um, yeah, I am now like sunscreen mad. Yeah, you want to and um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I want to get some good recommendations because uh, to be honest, I just. I just buy any factor 50, yeah. but I'm convinced I could have got better stuff, you know? So let me know what you guys think. Any of you are really good on sunscreen. Uh, yeah. Helen Graham Gordon, yeah. do you recommend hydration tablets in your water? Yes, 100%. Mentioned earlier, I tend to use the yeah. ones called SIS. You buy them in Asda, Tesco's, that type of thing. And uh, I buy the ones specifically, say, like electrolytes on the front. Get a couple of tubes of them, put them in your bottle. Um, I generally will have one sort of at the end of the day to replace this what I've lost. Try and stay hydrated. And then at the end of the day, when I'm sat around lunch, litre of water, put two tablets in, drink it. Hopefully then that helps me nice. stay hydrated. The um, Sarah's asked, Sarah Bell, this is an interesting one. I'm booking on to one of the trips this year, Killy, <clears throat> uh, for 23 or 24, still waiting on friends. How can I convince them to, uh, if I book on, they can add them later, uh, dates and things. Yeah, mm. firstly, Sarah, you know, we go back to what we talked about. You know, we talk about no iron team, teamwork. Um even if your mates don't book on, you, you can have a great time anyway with all the people that you go on your trip with. You know, you're never on your own um, like that. But yeah, in terms of convincing them, I, yeah, just just be open and honest about what sort of trip it is. Um, if you do book on a date and then they book on and there's no space, we can usually kind of squeeze them on if it's one or two. So, you know, we, we like to be kind of respectful of the sizes because we don't have massive groups. Um, but what we can do, and we've done this before, is that if there's a bunch of you, and you want to, you know, and there's like literally no space. We can always move you for free. Um, so we have our, our flexibility promise that you can, you know, if, if you're booked on a date and uh, a bunch of people want to go in, there's no really no space. We can do another trip for you, um, you know, a different date. And we can almost like a private trip. So we at the end of the day, we're not going to leave them behind. We're, we're going to make it happen one way or another. Um, it just might mean we have to change a couple of things just to make it happen. Yeah. Um, or just tell them, come on, guys, let's do it. Let's get the date in the diary. Let's work towards it. Um, it might be worth even if because sometimes it's they might want to book on for one reason or another. It might be they have questions. They have a, bit, a few concerns. Maybe they haven't been to altitude before. Maybe is it fitness? You know, how, how much is going to cost me? All these things, you know, get them to sort of reach out to us as well. Um, you know, we can try and help them make that decision. And then you don't have to persuade them and, and, and convince them as much that they're already yeah. in. So, yeah, just um, yeah, just, just just ping us a message if they want to do it. But, Sarah, yeah, definitely get yourself booked in, mate. Uh, awesome. We'd love to, to have you on the on the journey. Dave Rimington, also yep. awesome. Well done to Leah. Smashed yep. it. Dave, I heard, Dave. She, I heard she dragged you up to base camp as well. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome. What's the best way to give it a Kumbu cough? Well, Andy's Oof. still trying. Four years later. Four years later. Um, it's I, hard, yeah. It is a tricky one to get rid of. It takes of. a while. I think that you can get some cough suppressant sweets. Yeah. Um, so go to a pharmacy, ask for some cough suppressant sweets that you can just suck on for a while. Remember that cough I had for a while? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, just couldn't months, give it. And months. what I found was that the best way to stop 
the more I coughed, the more irritated it got, the more irritated it got, the more I coughed. Mm. So having those um, cough suppressants and those sweets and stuff like that made a big difference. Um, yeah, and there's a couple of different things like that. But g generally, I don't think there's any secret other than yeah. those cough suppressants made a big difference for me because they just stop you coughing, gives your throat time to heal, gives your chest yeah. time to get better, and uh, made a big difference. But also, yeah, well done for keeping up with Leah. Yeah, and, um, um, <laughs> she, yeah, I love. love I'll be honest. Well. She, uh, what, what concerns me is she she looked too cool, <laughs> like he didn't, like it wasn't that hard. <coughs> so I'm thinking I can cagua for her as well. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, um, but no, amazing. I know she raised lots of money for charity as well, so it's a good honor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that kumbu, kumbu coughing. I think sometimes, yeah, it does does take a bit of a bit of time for your body to get back to normal. Um, you know, especially with the lungs, like, you know, I, I suffer with asthma, it takes my lungs mm. a little bit longer after like a cold or a cough or something, but just get your body back in a good spot, you know? So when you come back, like hydration again, I go back to hydration, you know, get the vitamins down, you plenty of vegetables, look after yourself a bit, you know, and, and then your body's in the best spot it can be to repair itself. Essentially, that's what it's got to do. So yeah, yeah just Maybe have a bit of chill time as well. Do you reckon you get rid of yours soon? Or? Hopefully. Well, Andy, you... I, need, I need to get my body back into the space. What Andy <laughs> used to do was I would do a video reply to someone and I'd click record and he'd go, <laughs> and I'd go yeah. that's Andy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's one of those things. Yeah, Dave, uh, yeah, cough suppressants. And yeah, like you said, just looking after yourself, isn't it? Definitely. Um, next one. What is the terrain like underfoot on the descent? I think that's really base camp. Um, it's definitely hard. Yeah. It's... Rocky. Rocky, you know, mixed terrain, you know, higher up, you've got the, uh, what they call glacial moraine. So we're all the, the, the glacier, the beginning of it, the terminal, the glacier, they've got lots of rocks that basically have been grinded out over time. And that creates a bit of a challenge in underfoot. Yeah. Usually there's a path that's kind of woven in, um, you know, from the people who are, who are transporting things to base camp uh, or the trekkers as well. So it's pretty, you know, easy to spot path, you know, sometimes it's quite dusty. You know, so that's why we give out the, the, the buffs. Yeah. So you can you can have a, like a neck buff. So you're not so, you know, you, sometimes you can't help it. Afterwards, you get back to Kathmandu and you're emptying your nose and your ears. You've got dust everywhere. Just part of the part of where you are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, definitely this is where you need good boots, uh, you know, good footwear, um, you know, poles. using poles. You know, you're getting uh, also this is comes back to your training as well. You've got more time on mixed terrain. Yeah. And when you go to mixed terrain, it's not so foreign. You know, you're used to it. Yeah. I think the. The, the most tricky bits I find is actually the rocky, loose yeah. rocky bits yeah, and stuff like, like that. Yourself. It's a bit slippy. Your foot yeah. might slide a little bit. So using poles adds instant stability. Yeah. And also there's no substitute for practice. Yeah. So there's a couple of treks, particularly in Brecon where I am, and there'll probably be loads all around wherever you go. Yeah. But um, rocky paths, rocky trails, loose trails, it might be a nightmare, but the more you go on them, the, the easier it'll become. Um, awesome. Um, nice. John Newman has asked, what's Oof. your favorite trekking peaks? I don't know. Penavan? Uh, yeah, I mean, do you think he means, do you think he means high, okay. high altitude? I think he means high altitude. Um, it's an interesting one. I'll be honest with you. I think Island Peak's exciting because you yeah. the ladder crossings and the crevasse crossings. It's a bit of a ridge. Like that. The um and it's in the everest region as well so it's always nice to get an excuse to go back there yeah it's, um, they're all good you know do them all you can um, yeah it, mera peak's amazing it's the highest you know six four seven meters Kili, even got two cows class the trekking peak yeah uh, I mean, in winter it's a heck of a challenge i tell you especially if you're doing the weekender it's a beast yeah um you know favorite but yeah john definitely get involved mate Give, try a couple obviously you got aconcagio which is one of the highest the highest trekking peak pretty yeah. much do Although it's you know a bit more of an expedition, um, you know hard work, tough. You know I, I'd say you probably need some altitude experience first yeah. before going on that one. Uh, Summits of Fire maybe is a good one. Yeah, with Chimborazo, Cotopaxi. Yeah, yeah you've got the Ring of Fire if you just want to do uh, Cotopaxi. It's one of those. I was thinking about it when someone asked, you know, what's harder, this or this? EBC yeah. or Kili? Kili or hard. Tukal? Yeah. I always think it's always a little bit like comparing apples and oranges because yeah. they're quite different in their own way. Yeah. They have the similarities that you go uphill at the beginning and downhill at the end. Yeah. But generally <laughs> speaking, what it's <clears throat> like and the experience is always a little bit different. Yeah. So I think the best way to find out for you is to just probably book on each of them. <laughs> um, and yeah, do that. Yeah, John, let's do it. Clear your next 10 years, mate. We're uh, we're on it. Um, but right, a couple more before, before we go. Uh, actually, one more. K 
Cameron was asking, would you say it's worth doing Ben Nevis in prep for base camp? Yeah, why not, mate? Yeah, why not? Any time you can get up mountains, trek in. I mean, it doesn't have to be Ben Nevis. Don't think that you've got to do that to be able to get to base camp. You know, we've had people who have been there that haven't done Ben Nevis, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful mountain in its own right. It's a beautiful challenge in its own right. Um, but yeah, just it's just about getting out, you know, putting the mileage in, just getting out, pack on your back, you know, working those legs, getting used to it. You know, we just trek in. And, you know, just get your body in a good state. Yeah. Um, I say you don't have to be uh, Superman or Wonder Woman or anything. You can you can get out there and just enjoy it. And obviously, if you do what we've talked about today, um, those things, I know we haven't talked a lot, none of them about training, um, because we thought this is the, when you're doing it on the trek. And if you do those while you're on a trek, fitness is a real leveler. You yeah. can be a triathlete. You can be overweight. But if you do all those things, and with a little bit of luck, um, that's, that's what will make the difference. Yeah. You know, I think that leads us into final thought, Dave. I think that one <laughs> pretty much final thought. Final man. thought might be the first tune in. No one's asked about the knee. I think I'm, that means I'm officially past the knee. Jeez, that's the knee phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, no, uh, I think, yeah, yeah, that's my final thought. <laughs> no, no, Brilliant. I know. I, I honestly think, yeah, the bit one of the biggest lessons that I've learned recently, and I will write that article because there is some cool things that I want to talk yeah. about. But I think, um, yeah, all of those things together, super, super important. Yeah. And I think mindset, for me, I had a failure of the body, but that's out yeah. of my control. Yeah, yeah. But what was in my control was Love like... wasn't on your side. Yeah, was how I felt, you know? And I yeah. think trying to keep keep yourself cheerful, keep yourself happy makes a big difference. Exactly. And um, yeah. yeah, don't forget to enjoy your trekking. That's probably, that's probably my final thought. Don't forget to enjoy your trekking. Yeah, mate, great stuff. Um, yeah, good one to finish on. It that. is roasting. I was going to say, it's hot in here, isn't it? Don't worry, mate. So we're out in a minute. But no, thanks very much. Um, yeah, we'll be in touch uh, oh. next week. Go on, Dave. Shona gave me the name of that stuff and I've forgotten it. Maybe Fee can find it. It's all right. We'll go back in the Yeah, we'll go back for it. Thank you very but much. But no, thanks very much, guys. I know we went over today. Wow, it's hour and 10. It was a, it was a good one. Um, but yeah, thanks, thanks everyone. Uh, it's been awesome. And we'll, we'll catch you next week, next Tuesday. Take it easy. Bye. Hopefully no tech issues now. So hot. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys.